Uh, let's get back to work. The hard line continues with the veteran presidential historian Craig Shirley and the veteran public opinion pollster John Zogby. More of your calls as well. 1877 Newsmax, 1877 639 7629. I'm going to talk about a, about a very specific woman on the left here, but John, let me begin with you. With regard to that report we just heard from Miranda, these ladies can say all they want, but I have in front of me a Gallup poll released in April that says 70 percent of American women do not view Donald Trump favorably at all. It's not like they're telling them who to vote for, but don't the numbers tell us that right now they're fighting an uphill battle with women? Absolutely. We can only go by the numbers that we have right now and not make any future projections. But if he's going, if, if what these women are saying is, is true, it's not showing up in the polls just yet. And it's hard to see how it will. Um, he has a lot of history and a lot of statements on the record that he can't backtrack from uh, that, that show a darker side of, of him that's not appealing to women, not just to liberal women, but to a lot of women. He's got to do, get more than conservative women, the millions, as, as they said in the report, who love him already. Um, and uh, it's hard to see that capacity. But you are absolutely right. Right now, he has high, high unfavorables among women. Craig, what does presidential history tell us about a president needing to get a specific group, if you will, but more to this point here, the need to get women that Donald Trump has got to work on? Well, you know, that's an interesting question, Ed. You know, traditionally, women uh, up until quite recently voted more heavily Republican than uh, Democratic. B Barry Goldwater actually got more of the women's vote than he did of uh, the men's vote in 1964. Same thing with uh, Richard Nixon in 1968. It was only in 1980 when a gender gap began to emerge where Reagan got more male uh, vote than uh, than female vote. Uh, it, it closed up considerably in 84, but even so, he still uh, lagged, and the Republican Party has lagged ever since. I suspect that of that 70 percent, you know, we, we and as John will tell you better than I can, is that people do lie to pollsters. They are sophisticated now about politics and strategies and polling, and they will especially lie about politically correct things like uh, race or homosexuality, and I and I expect to suspect too is that the certain per percentage don't want to be seen as being anti-Hillary for fear of being caught thought of as being politically incorrect. The other factor too is is that just because they disapprove of Donald Trump doesn't mean they're not necessarily going to vote for him. They may not like him, but they also might think you know maybe this country needs a good kick you know swift in the uh, in the backside. By the way, Craig, how dare you say that people lie to pollsters? I'm shocked that you would say <laughs> that in John's presence because we know that they always tell the truth. Uh 1877 Newsmax. Let's get a couple of very quick calls in here because we got a lot of ground to cover. Sharon from Visalia, California. Sharon, do you think that Donald Trump has a woman problem? No. Why? Not at all. I think he has a media problem. You know, it, it amazes me that all, even Republican p that are in the media, they talk about him bad, too. Does anybody ever take up for a Republican? I it think amazes that's, I, me. I, I was a uh, Democrat for years, okay. and I've just become a Republican. I've changed because of this. All right, because I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave this to Democrats somebody else. All the Democrats stick together. The I'm Republicans gonna, don't I'm stick gonna together. I'm going to leave this to somebody else here because I'll tell you what, John, I'll throw it to you first. Doesn't the media talk about good things about Republicans? Yeah, when they do good things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, look, uh, d not so long ago, uh, the president was really being bashed. And, uh, and not so long ago, the Republicans won 2010, 2014 by huge landslides. And the question was, hey, is the president still relevant? And he was in a deep funk. So, you know, there are ups and downs here. But let me just address something about women. You know, what Craig says is, is true, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s and even before that, because the majority of, of women were married. There's a marriage gap here, not just simply a gender gap. gap. It is single women who do not like Donald Trump, and the single women are growing in numbers, not only because they're millennials, but because of divorce, because of a choice to not be married, because of careers. Uh, that, that are a higher priority than raising 2.4 kids. And so, again, the GOP is on a different side demographically as okay. to what is happening in the country. Let me move on quick. Tom from Phoenix, Arizona joins us on the hard line. Tom, you don't think Donald Trump has a woman problem, do you? Oh, not at all. See his wife? Did we lose Hello? you, Tom? 
Come on, Tom, go for it. You got 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Go. My, my wife voted for Obama. I couldn't believe that. I haven't talked to her in four years. Well, but, that's okay. Uh, Most geez. married couples don't talk for 50 years, so it's okay. You're in good shape. <laughs> go for that's it. Go on. No, All right. So she, tell me real uh, quick, why Trump. does Donald Trump not have a woman problem when 70% of American women view him unfavorably? 20 seconds. I don't know. He just says the truth. And uh, they just came out stand Hillary and her outfits. <laughs> and her outfits. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you brought the outfits into it, too, because I was waiting until somebody would bring up a, a, a coat that cost $12,000. Tom, thanks a lot for the call. We appreciate it. we got to move on. Real quickly, gentlemen, Elizabeth Warren's becoming a huge attack dog when it comes to Donald Trump. I want you to hear what she said at the Massachusetts Democratic Party State Convention. Here we go. He whines about the press, he whimpers about the students, and he complains that the judge doesn't like him. Well, Donald, it's time to stop sniveling and put on your big boy pants, because this is what accountability sounds like. 20 seconds, Craig Shirley. Is Donald Trump going to keep himself from taking the bait? I think the best thing that could happen to Donald Trump is to be attacked by a woman by the likes of Elizabeth Warren. Look, let's, let's be honest, she's a joke. Uh, she only has a small constituency in ultra-leftist Massachusetts and ultra-leftist leftist Harvard. The rest of America doesn't know her. Uh, and to the extent they do know her, they know her that she claims she was Native American because of her high cheekbones. So she, she's a joke. All right, hey, John, Elizabeth Warren is likely tonight. She is going to get behind Hillary Clinton. She's going to support her. People are talking to her about a possible Veep connection here. 20 seconds, John, real quick. Is this going to make any difference at all, her getting behind Hillary? Yes, it is. Again, it's the millennials and the progressive wing of, of the party. You had a major consolidation uh, today with Elizabeth Warren, with Barack Obama, and with, uh, uh, and with Bernie Sanders. Uh, now, is that enough to help Hillary? I don't know, but it certainly is a good start in terms of, of uh, democratic unity. And you and the polls are going to tell us. I'm sure we will. Gentlemen, spirited as always, please be nice to your wives. Don't say anything about what they wear, because whether it's wives or girlfriends, guys, we all know that's a recipe for disaster. John Zogby, <laughs> Craig Shirley, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Next up, one of the most influential conservative voices in America who went libertarian for a reason. Mary Madeline digs in on this and much more after the break. Plus, your phone calls will continue at 1-877-NEWSMAX here on The Hardline.